passion. Very pity, eh? To hear all this. Maybe I have experienced this problem in the 1950s here in Malacca. For them, growth has not been inclusive enough. In addition, growth has come at the expense of the environment. While environmental degradation affects everyone, the poor are more vulnerable to violent weather, flood, and a changing climate. Eradicating poverty and restructuring of the global economy to low carbon and environmentally sustainable economic pathways are within the reach of developed and developing countries and are mutually complementary and reinforcing. The carbonization is the key to meet the full scale of the global climate challenge. Green growth policies provide a powerful tool for re-examining the conventional growth paradigm while showcasing that economy prosperity can go hand in hand with ecological sustainability. Iceland, a small island country, top the list of being the greenest country in the world because of its location. Iceland has focused on using its geothermal landscape to utilize clean electricity and heat. Iceland hope to be the first country to use hydrogen as an energy source for building and transportation. Bhutan, a tiny kingdom with a population of less than 800,000, was the first country in the world to become the world's first carbon negative country. Keeping the country green was the vision of the 37 year old King Jimmy Singi Wang Chak. In 2009, the government of Bhutan promised to remain carbon neutral as part of the Gross Happiness Index. The constitution was amended to include that forested areas would not drop below 60%. Malaysia, in its first 11 Malaysia plan, embarked on a green growth journey. Through the Economic Planning Unit of the Prime Minister's Department, the federal government called that all projects should strike a balance between economic, social, and environmental development. In 2009, as then uh, our the Chief Minister of Malacca came up with some programs developing Malacca into a fully developed state model after the tiny European city state of Luxembourg. As Malacca lacked natural resources, it was quite a dilemma, but the administration took up the challenge. If a tiny city state like Luxembourg could compete globally and maintain economic independence despite being handicapped by its lack of natural resources, sure could Malacca. The administration drew up plans to turn Malacca into a sustainable knowledge-based economy that could weather the global trends following a roadmap secured from the Organization of Economic Cooperation Development, or OECD. 
we started concentrating on the building sectors, capitalizing on Malacca's rich history as a center of civilization and melting pot culture, namely tourism. The sector received a boom when it was jointly awarded the converted UNESCO World Heritage City status in 2008. Tourist arrival in the state increased fourfold from 1.7 million in 2000 to 8.9 million in 2010, spilling over into other sectors use shopping, food, healthcare, education, recreation, history, culture, green technology, convention, sport, etc. And now the number of tourists has pushed up to 16 million people. The new solar production plant, SunPower, was RM 2.2 billion in foreign direct investment began operation in Malacca, creating 2,000 new jobs. Malacca is the forerunner state in Malaysia that has developed a green action plan. Malacca has also built a 5 megawatt solar plant in Rubo, in Rumbia, not Rubo, by Kumpulan Malacca Brahat and a 2 megawatt solar farm in Green City near Kuala Yasan Saat in Acro by Gani Kenchana. And we also have put up many uh, rooftop solar panels. In 2011, Malacca took its first step towards environment and urban sustainability when it adopted the green technology blueprint and formalized a vision to transform Malacca into a green technology city state by 2020. In addition, Malacca has also introduced green building index following the first step of Melbourne, Australia, one of the most sustainable cities in the world. Under the present Chief Minister, Malacca hold many more new initiatives, namely cleanliness campaign, don't mess with Malacca. Malacca was also the first state in Malaysia to introduce the no plastic bags plan in shopping malls, utilization of LED lighting, adopting carbon neutral indicators, and reducing emission by introducing the three buses and upscaling effort to use renewable energy, among others. There are about 1.8 billion young people in the world today, the largest demographic of our time. Young people are crucial stakeholders of a nation, and as such, investing in them is extremely important. Young people can play an active role in protecting and improving the environment through advocacy program. Green programs can be conducted in their respective communities and this will lead to a sustainable lifestyle change. Because an empowered community will be able to bring about transformative changes on behaviors, attitudes, as well as sustainability of the environment. Action plans and collective experiences gain need to be put into practice with strong leadership, commitment, and only then tangible changes would take place. This planet is ours. It is the only one we got and it is upon us to protect it for our future generation. At World Youth Foundation, we offer our partnership to provide you with advisory support 
in the implementation of your action plan. We organize program not only here, you can get in touch with Asha to organize in your respective countries. In fact, we have many more programs in Malacca to tackle some problem of the environment, especially the burning of plantation in Sumatra. We have the discussion here five years ago in the Afghanistan of Riau, and we have discussed in Jakarta, and this year we are going to discuss again in Medan. We have given many suggestions, and the Indonesian government has taken many steps eh, to reduce the burning. And now it looks like the Jerebu has been reduced. We talk with our other partner in our neighboring countries to face this type of problem. So the young people, of course, can join us. We will have our seminar in Medan in November. But under the DMI, the Malay Islamic World Secretariat, which will be open by the President of Indonesia. I take this opportunity to thank all our sponsors, namely Ministry of Youth and Sports Malaysia, Tenaga National Berhad, the general manager is here. I was in Tenaga before, <laughs> worked there for 11 years, and now my son is there. Relevant chairman of like uh, Youth Council, and our friend from Commonwealth Youth Council. And uh, thank you also to Malaysian National Commission for UNESCO. Green Cross Asia, International Youth Council, an idea for us for successfully implementing the event. With that note, I hereby open the international capacity building workshop on Green Cross here in Malacca. Thank you very much.